Will you people stop stealing all of my material? Ever since I joined on, I find a commentary material. Everybody else wants to use la di da di da di da di da Jeez, it's like I can't get anything done on my own. I mean, I'm about to have Boon Cannon number 5. Never mind the fact that I made Boon Cannon number 4.5, and a lot of people seem to think that that should be number 5. Shut up! I just want to make Boon Cannon number 5. I need some kind of material that's interesting. No, no, I, I, I said interesting. Why, Jimmy, what are you doing? Why are you rolling the intro? No, Jimmy, no. Jimmy, no, stop the in- This guy likes Man of Steel. Okay. Jax and DC Comic Zone. Casey at Casey Affleck is on Jimmy Kimmel for the movie The Finest Hours with Chris Pine. Ah, yes, this seems like a fine way to start your video. Cut off the beginning of your name and talk about something going on in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a vlogger and do, 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 do. Look, not an excuse. Even if you go without a script, even if you do that, the least you can do is turn the freaking TV off. But yeah, oh man. Man of Steel was an amazing, perfect start to the DCU. All the true fans know it. Uh, shitty Nolan films were the start of nothing. Well, since he decided that anybody who's covering this is going to be biased, may as well state my bias. I'm what this guy might call, I guess this guy would end up calling me that at least, a Nolanite and a Marvel tart. I enjoy the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I enjoy the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy. That being said, Man of Steel, well, I'll be honest, it wasn't terrible. I wouldn't call it a great film, but I'd be hard-pressed to call it a monstrosity. I can also see some problems somebody might have with the Nolan trilogy. I mean, I actually have a real-life friend who doesn't really like the Nolan movies because they're too dark for his tastes, and you know what? That's fine. And I'm sure this guy is going to provide some insight into what he's thinking. I'm, I'm getting proven wrong as soon as I finish this sentence, aren't I? They did nothing and they resulted in nothing. They resulted in making money for basically no reason because they're never going to continue and no one's going to give a fuck. Only the Nolan Knights. You're stupid as fuck, the Nolan Knights. Yes, the Nolan shitty films are not amazing. Man of Steel was amazing. Uh, the Dark Shit trilogy was amazingly piece of shit. It was amazingly, shockingly three pieces of shit. Uh, yes. Yeah, how dare they? How fucking dare? A film series conclude that wasn't meant to continue beyond the third movie. How fucking dare a film series be considered standalone when it's based on a comic book? Especially when it was created before the mere concept of a cinematic universe existed in people's minds. It makes me want to do things! Like I said, the Marvel Tarts are butthurt because, like I said, Man of Steel outgrossed every single... Phase 1 MCU movie, it even, it even made more than shitty Ant-Man. Of course, you would expect Man of Steel to make more than shitty Ant-Man, but it made more than Captain America 1, uh, Thor 1, Thor 2, Incredible Hulk, oh man. Okay, so I can easily just dispute your argument by saying that sales is not an indication of quality of a film, Therefore, your argument is invalid from the get-go. But no, no, you know what? No, let's let's use his sales argument. You're right. Man of Steel did make more money than Ant-Man and most of the Phase 1 films. Never mind that half of the movies you mentioned aren't in Phase 1, but I digress. Hell, I even see your point about a movie you failed to mention. The actual beginning of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that would serve as a much better comparison than the ones you were giving. Oh, wait, except Iron Man did better within the U.S. and Canada, indicating that Man of Steel probably sold more tickets based strictly on the fact that it's Superman and the difference in worldwide sales is reflected in the difference in budget. Also, the actual Avengers movie did better than Man of Steel. Yes, I know it's the actual group crossover, but it's still an actual phase one movie. 
Oh, and since you decided to talk about Phase 2 a little bit, the only films from Phase 2 that didn't gross better than Man of Steel were Thor The Dark World and Ant-Man. Yes, my same point about Iron Man outdoing Man of Steel domestically could be made against the Winter Soldier, but again, if so, why is he the one who later in this video cites worldwide sales numbers? Yes, thank you Zack Snyder again for Man of Steel. Great start to the, to the DC u universe that leads to Batman vs Superman, and that also leads to Suicide Squad and Justice League. Sorry to cut you off, but this kind of goes into a point you make later a bit, so I just want to go ahead and uh, put, a, put, a little, put a little bookmark right in there. Right there. Yep. And for you stupid fucking pathetic trolls that actually Man of Steel really didn't divide anything. What it basic Man of Steel, what it did is it separated the real fans from the stupid shit critics that didn't know Jack and from the fake fans. It actually, Man of Steel actually exposed a bunch of fake ass fucking fans, Marvel Tars, No Knights. So what you're saying is the people don't like it. Because they don't like it. Well, can't argue with that logic. It's perfectly flawless and I see no problems with it whatsoever. And it showed that the real fans still made Man of Steel success. Because Man of Steel ridiculously succeeded. $668 million worldwide. Actually, even more with, it, with DVD sales and with the pre-gross before that. Really? Well... I'd love to see these figures that show how much it sold in DVD and Blu-ray sales, never mind the fact that pre-ordered tickets are actually included in the box office numbers. Oh, wait, wait. Wait, that's right, I can. Um, let's see, 106 million on DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah, I'd, I'd call that a success. What are the DVD and Blu-ray sales figures for Iron Man again? 196 million dollars? Huh, it's weird. According to you, though, that movie's shit and shouldn't sell better than Man of Steel because it's Marvel. And Nolan, Nolan's piece of shit trilogy led to nothing. It led to nothing because that <laughs> the trilogy is dead as a doornail and will never continue. But it wasn't supposed to continue anyway. So what the fuck am I talking about? That's th that's what you were going to say, right? You, you know, because that that would make sense. No, gonna keep uh, gonna keep spewing rhetoric at me then. All right, don't mind me. Ben Affleck's Batman is the true comic book Batman is going to keep on continuing, and is an interconnected universe with Suicide Squad, Justice League, and so forth and so on. Yes, like I said, in Suicide Squad, Amanda Waller mentions Superman. And they know, everyone knows of each character. So, yes, Nolan's piece of shit led to nothing and was pretty pointless. It was a pointless fucking stupid trilogy that has no effect on anything and is going to be thrown in the trash by the wayside. Like I said, at least Burton and Schumacher trilogy actually acknowledge Superman, actually acknowledge Metropolis and Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. Nolan's shit was trash and led to nothing. Go fuck yourself, Nolan Knights. First of all, do, do you know what a trilogy is because four movies is not a trilogy never mind the fact that the burton movies are barely connected to the schumacher movies um second let's take a look at your precious burton schumacher quadrilogy which i also happen to like save for the last one shall we in terms of referencing metropolis and superman and offhand jokes yeah that's totally indicative of an interconnected world and at least one of these references could apply even if Superman were a fictional character. Hell, I don't even know if there was more than one. The only one I remember was the one joke from Batman and Robin where he says, this is why Superman works alone. I'm not even going to bother looking up whether there's more because I guarantee you they were incidental as best. Do you know why? Do you know why I already know that? Because of the fact that that's how DC writing works in the comics, too. They don't directly connect a whole lot. Oh, and on top of that, if we're gauging movies based on references to other works in their universe, then 
All right. Let's find all the Batman references in Man of Steel. Um, there's a Wayne Tech building. It's about it. Oh, and let's talk about the story. Let's see. And um, Batman versus Superman, it's supposedly already established that Superman could be a threat to the planet Earth. That vibe doesn't come off in the movie Man of Steel at all. We just, the movie ends with like Superman being big, big hero guy. It doesn't end with any uncertainty as to whether he's good or bad or what. Which it probably should have if it's going to be an interconnected story. And you know what? I'd actually be willing to give you a pass on that. If not for the fact that uh, the very next movie is the one where Superman is supposed to be, you know, potentially looked at as a villain by the citizens of Earth. And that vibe has not already been established. You know, you actually have to connect the story in order to connect the story. And, you know, at least Nolan's trilogy didn't claim to be connected to something else when, in reality, it, there wasn't any connection to begin with. Oh, and here's the one thing. The one thing that I can say that blows every single argument you have. Every single one. Out of the out of the water. Psst. Nolan wrote the story to Man of Steel and produced it. <laughs> After calling a bunch of movies that haven't even come out yet amazing, the video ends. Do I even need to give my final thoughts here? I, I mean, really, my last point there, that pretty much debunks his entire repetitive, rambling, and poorly researched video. My advice, D don't, just, just don't. See, Corey, I can go an entire video on comic book movies without mentioning your name, unlike, wait, sh- <laughs>